I get to talk about what kind of love allows us to experience God's freedom. Number one, focused love brings freedom. Focused love brings freedom. When we will choose where we're going to focus, choose what we're looking at, be focused in our life. And 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 says, love should be the goal of your life. Or I want to say it like this, love should be the focus of your life. If you will have your focus on the right thing, it will bring a freedom. It will bring something great into your life. And so has anyone ever got distracted? Come on, give me a wave if you've ever been distracted with something, right? We've all been in that position. We were doing one thing and we got distracted. I was making the pizza and I got distracted. Well, you know, during COVID, has anyone ever binge watched a TV show? Give me a wave if you've ever done that, okay? I had never really experienced this before COVID, but I've now experienced this, right? And so I remember this one time, we got this new TV series. We sat down as, you know, part of our family. We're going to start this new series, and we started with episode one. Just going to watch one episode. We sit down, we watch it. When it was over, Pastor Steve said, just one more. So we watched a second episode. It was so good, right? So then at the end of the second episode, Pastor Steve said, just one more. And this kept going until it was 2 o'clock in the morning. I was so exhausted. I'm like, I can't even see the episode. I'm going to miss something. I'm so tired, right? Finally shut it down, and I'm going up to bed. I'm so tired. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm going up the stairs to my bedroom. He's coming behind me. And I open the bedroom door. And when I open the bedroom door, I turn on the light, and there's my bedroom. There's rose petals all over the floor of my bedroom. There's rose petals all over the bed. There's, there's like the candles that don't, that don't go out, right? The candles. There's this bottle of lotion. I mean, there's this romantic note. It's like, it's, it's just covered. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm so tired. I look at him and I said, what is this? And he comes up the stairs and he looks and he said, I forgot I did that. <laughs> he said, I did it earlier in the day thinking I was going to whisk you away and take you upstairs. And I was going to romance you. And I had it all set. And I was all ready. And then we started binge watching. And just one more. Just one more episode. Just one more episode. I said, honey, it is 2 o'clock in the morning. Pack it up for another day. Pack it up and bring her back out. Right? But he got distracted. And can I tell you, sometimes you get distracted. Sometimes there's a moment you can love on your kids. There's a moment you can love on your employee. There's a moment you can love on your neighbor or the colleague at work. And you get distracted with other things and you forget that moment that you had to be able to express a focused love on someone. The scripture tells us in Matthew chapter 22 verse 37, Jesus answered and said, love the Lord your God with every passion of your heart. With all the energy of your being, with all of my passion, with everything that's in me. You know, when we worship together, we have a moment to be focused on just loving God. We have that moment to sing those words and say, nothing else matters. I'm not, I'm not thinking about what for, what's for dinner. I'm not thinking about what, who's standing beside me. I'm focused on loving Jesus. I'm focused on worshiping him, right? It says, love with all the energy of your being and with every thought that is within you. That's a love, and you just begin to control your thought life and bring it back into focus. It says, this is the great and supreme commandment. And the second is like the most important. You must love your friend in the same way that you love yourself. I want to encourage you this week. Look, be focused. Who can you focus some love on? Who can you not be distracted but choose and and focus some love on that person? The second one this morning is attentive love brings freedom. You know, if if we will choose to be attentive and and be attentive to a person, we can really love on someone. But it brings a great freedom in our life. But when you go to a restaurant and a waiter or waitress comes to you, how many know that you can find out pretty quickly if they're attentive to you? You know, if they, it depends if they're, if they're serving you well. And if all of a sudden they're attentive to you and they're serving you well, how many know that it changes the whole experience of the dinner? Everything has changed because somebody was focused on you. Somebody was attentive to you. Somebody served you well. And how many know that if somebody serves you well, you make sure that you thank them, right? You're going to thank them for serving you well because it's hard to find someone who will serve you well. It's hard to find a restaurant where you can get good service. So when you get it, you want to show your appreciation. But when they serve you well, it is because they have chosen to be attentive to you. 
You know, God wants us to be intentional and attentive in our love towards other people. And the way that happens is by us choosing to serve people. See, people think the more people that serve me, the more free I'm going to be. But God says it doesn't work like that. The more you choose to serve other people, the more you experience a freedom and a life on the inside of you. The more you choose to serve others in love, that's how freedom grows. For everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence. Love others as you love yourself. That is a true act of freedom. That is true freedom. So I was thinking... How hard is it to serve someone you don't love? Anybody tried it? Anybody tried to do something for somebody and serve somebody, but, but you, you know you don't love that person, right? You don't even like them, right? You're just like, I got to do this. It's hard to serve someone that you don't love. You begin to think in your head, well, they're not going to appreciate it. They're not going to thank me. They're probably not even going to remember what I did in 24 hours. It's a waste of my time. It's a waste of my effort. It's a, a waste of my energy to serve this person that I don't even love because they're not going to be grateful for it. And in that, we lock ourselves in. That's not freedom. Freedom is when we choose to serve people. When we choose to serve them, something changes on the inside of us. See, have you ever tried to make someone grateful? If you're a parent, give me a wave. You have tried it if you're a parent, okay? We try to teach our kids to be grateful. Well, like, say thank you. Say thank you. Say thank you. You're not getting another one until you say thank you, right? You know, we try to teach our kids to be grateful. We teach them, and the next day, they're still ungrateful. Then we teach them again. The next day, we can't make anyone be grateful. We can't make anyone be thankful. There has to be something that changes in the heart. See, it's our job to serve and love. They have to work on the soil of their heart. They have to learn how to be grateful. They have to learn how to be thankful. There has to be something that changes in their heart. You can't make it happen for anybody else. You can't go to someone and say, I'm going to make you be grateful. I'm going to make you be thankful. I'm going to make you appreciate everything I do for you. It's not going to work. They're in charge of the soil of their own heart. You are in charge of loving and serving. And so I was thinking about, you know, how, you know, we try to teach our children, but all of a sudden something happens one day. They're ungrateful. They're unthankful. You know, they're unappreciative. Let's be honest, okay? And then one day something happens, and there's this light bulb moment, and all of a sudden they're grateful. That moment happened for me. I had done my first birthday party for my first child, the n- m- number one, the first birthday and I had invited people, and I definitely did not bake the cake so that you know. But I had organized things and got things ready, and I decorated nice, and I invited all these people. It's the first birthday of my first child, and I did the whole party, and everybody left, and I cleaned everything up, and I was so exhausted. And I picked up the phone, and I called my mother, and I said, Mom, Thank you for every birthday party that you ever threw for me in my entire life. I'm just so thankful. You're just such a great mother. And I just started rattling on. And she's like, what's going on with you? I said, I just had my first birthday experience. I am so exhausted. I had no idea what you put into that party. I had no idea what you had invested behind the scenes. I had no idea how much work that was going to be. I am so grateful. See, she couldn't make me be grateful. I had to experience that on my own. But we can serve people and we can set people up as we serve them in love to now experience a heart change on their own timing as they begin to learn, as they begin to grow. And so if we love with an attentive love, serving comes naturally to us and then we experience more freedom. We begin to experience the freedom as we choose to serve people in love. And as we do that, we are the ones who begin to get freer and freer and freer on the inside. We're not trying to free them. We're freeing ourselves as we continue to serve people in love. Number three is that caring love brings freedom. And as we care for people, we become more free ourselves. See, it's not just focused on what can I get, but we choose to care for other people. And, And what is the best way that we can care for another human being. What's the best way that we can care for your spouse, for your kids, for your boss, for your employees, for your neighbors, for your friends, for your small group leader, for the people in your small group, for the people on your team at church, for the people that you're starting to learn to get to know in church, in the family of God? What's the best way that you can care for someone else? It's to encourage them. If you can learn how to encourage people, you can care for people. I remember my youngest son one day, you know, he was talking to me and he said, Mom, 
when people encourage me, and he had been to church, and somebody had encouraged him when he came out of the kids' church. He said, when people encourage me at church, he said, I just tip my head back and receive it. And I thought, isn't that amazing? And that's how we're designed to be. That's how God designed us to be. He designed us to be able to freely receive the encouragement of others. And how many know when somebody encourages you, you just got to tip your head back and receive it, right? Because we recognize we're our own worst enemy. We recognize we see our flaws, our weaknesses, our disappointments more than anybody else. So somebody comes along your life and encourages you. You tip your head back and you receive the encouragement. And God wants to use you as a vessel to encourage someone else. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 11 says, Because of that, encourage the hearts of your fellow believers and support one another just as you have already been doing. I love the end there, just as you've already been doing, because I believe here at Great Church, you're already doing it. You're already encouraged. It says, now just do it a little bit more. I know you're already doing it, but look for someone this week. We're in the month of love. Look for someone this week to encourage. Send a text message of encouragement. Send a message of encouragement. Pray and say, God, who can I encourage this week in the family of God? This verse is talking about the church family, the church being together. It says, look for people that you can encourage. God wants his love to be like a a flowing vessel that'll go right through you and touch someone else. I want to encourage you, look for someone to encourage. Because any relationship fails when one person feels uncared for, unnoticed, unappreciated, unattended to, or neglected. The consequences are always a breakdown in the relationship. Because everyone needs encouragement. And you know, you might be thinking this morning, well, I'm uncared for, I'm unnoticed, I'm unappreciated, I'm unattended to, and I am definitely neglected. And so you you just read me. That's me. Can I encourage you that you can stay there if you want to in a victim mentality and say, I'm uncared for, I'm unattended to, I'm neglected. You can stay in your victim mentality or you can rise up and say, who can I care for? Who can I attend to? Who can I love? Who can I encourage? Because if you're sitting there and you're just looking for somebody to do it to you, that is not freedom. A lot of people start looking at shortcomings in people. That's why they can't love people. They're looking at the shortcomings in their spouse, the shortcomings in their kids. I mean, give me a wave if you're married, okay? If you're married, you can see the shortcomings in your spouse like nobody else. If you're a parent, you can see the shortcomings in your children like nobody else. If you are a child, you can see the shortcomings in your parents like nobody else. If you're the boss, you can see the shortcomings in your employees. If you're an employee, you can see the shortcomings in your boss, right? People are looking at the shortcomings in other people. And because they're focused on the shortcomings in other people, they cannot care for people. They cannot love people effectively. And so if you're looking at the shortcomings in your friends, your spouse, your kids, your parents, your boss, your pastors, your co-workers, then you are unable to love like Jesus when you focus on the negative. As long as you're focused on the negative, you are unable to love like Jesus. Because cared for means that there is a grace to see the good in others. 1 John 4, 19 says, Our love for others is our grateful response to the love God first demonstrated for us. See, if if we receive God's love, we now can be able to give that away. And I love in the footnotes there, it says, We continue to love because God first loved us. We continue to love other people because God loved us. We need our grace glasses on. See, religion would have never held me in a church. I mean, I'd have been in one time and oh, halfway through the service, right? I mean, I, there's, there's nothing about religion that would have held me. But when I experienced the presence of God and unconditional love, something changed on the inside of me. It's like, that's the kind of love I can live for. That's the kind of love I need in my life. And that's the kind of love I want to learn how to give. And I'm in the process of learning how to give. And I want to encourage you, this is love month. And God's saying he's going to bring freedom into our life. You're going to learn how to love in a way you haven't loved before. Why? Because that's what brings freedom. And God's looking at your life saying, I want you free. He's cheering you on saying, there's a greater freedom for you that's available. There's a greater freedom in your relationships. There's a greater freedom on the inside of you. And God says it's going to happen through love. 